If you could trap a moment of a painful sorrow or a deep joy, in what form would you like to keep it? We are all emotional beings, and tears are a crucial part of our emotional moments. Now, remember the last time you cried next to someone. I don't even have to ask if you did, you sure did, but remember how did you react then? Most of us will often reflexively hide our tears, wipe our face with the first thing that can get to our hands on. And that's why today, I want to show you why you should not hide your tears, but rather, wear them proudly as a totem of your humanity. Hi everyone, I'm Ivan, designer and researcher, and today I want to talk about, talk about emotions and tears. But I will not talk about myself, I will talk about the findings of my work and research. I started to explore emotions and tears out of my research curiosity, and today I would like all of you to get to know yourself a little bit better after this speech. Together with you, I will also like to provoke some of the imposed social norms. As a person who loves to ask question why, I want to shake the unwritten social rules that often makes us feel uncomfortable in our own skin, and we don't even know how to explain why. Moreover, I want to show you how easy it is to re-exam the existing social values that are a part of a construct that distances us from ourselves and ultimately from society. But let me go back to the beginning. Why emotions and why tears? My deeper acquaintance with tears began during my thesis project, where, as a designer, I researched biology and human body. More precisely, I researched the relationship between biology, technology and human body. During that process, my teardrop found itself in a test tube, in the hands of a colleague from a faculty of microbiology. After a day of incubation, my colleague invited me to take a look at my tear through a microscope. As I was looking at my tear through a microscope, I realized the beauty and power of tears. I immediately knew my task is to show the beauty and poetry of tears. And so throughout the process, I uncovered the potential of tears I have never thought of before. This research showed me how powerful, unique and complex we are as human beings but also how fragile and vulnerable we are at the same time. And that is why I decided to design a wearable that will turn tears, which we often stereotypically recognize as weaknesses, into our strength and most powerful shield, acting as a totem of our humanity. But in order to do that, I'd had to get to know a tears a little bit better. Namely, tears are the substances consisted of series of minerals, enzymes, proteins, which turn tears into a superfluid. Among all these components, there is one protein called lazozyme. Lazozyme is one very powerful protein, also known as the antibiotic of a body. I fell so in love with this protein, its capabilities, and the very context in which it lives in a human body, that I just had to do something with it. So throughout the research, I discovered that lazozyme has one interesting possibility. I found that lazozyme is capable of simulating growth of precious metal particles. More precisely, it can simulate the growth of gold nanoparticles. After that discovery, I knew I wanted to make something that will use these properties and turn our tears and emotions in the product, our tears, into gold, both metaphorically and literally. And so, with the help of scientists, chemists and biologists, we build a prototype that turns our emotions into gold, creating a totem of our humanity, weakness and happiness. Because we all cry, that's a fact. And apart from biological benefits of tears, they're also a powerful social signal to the rest of us. So I wonder, why do we hide them? And even from those who we call friends. To be able to talk more openly about emotions, we need to look at them agnostically. That is, we must not attach any social norms to them. The best examples are the kids. They laugh, scream, cry, all before our eyes, without a shred of shame or embarrassment. Yet those same children, as they start to grow up, start to embrace the imposed social norms. And as they're growing up, their tears cease to be so acceptable. And that's, so, and that's how we brought one of the most primitive and most humane way of expressing emotions into a taboo. It is this social construct and phenomenon, emotions as taboo, 
that made me explore this topic more deeply and try to show how we look at some things blindly. And as a human beings, we should not be ashamed of our tears and emotions. During the process of turning tears into gold, there is another component that is interesting, and that is time. How long does it take us to cope over the loss of a loved one? How long does it take us to cope with the new reality that has befallen us? How long does it actually get to turn tears into gold? One thing is for sure, the human body needs time to heal. When we talk about this project, and in general while designing the biology, I find time to be a unique quality of biology and living things. In case of this variable, the process from the first tier to the growth of gold on the particles lasts from minimum to five days to more than three months, from the point when the first tier comes into contact with the variable. That is why this variable is designed to work with the body. It follows our rhythm and pace of our recovery. Because when we go through difficult times, what we often need in order to recover is what we think we miss the most, and that is time. These biological affordances allow us to design artifacts that work with the balance and rhythm of our body, while not imposing its own pace. But to go back to the question I asked at the outset, if you could trap a moment of a painful sorrow or a deep joy, in what form would you like to keep it? I will ask you to dedicate yourself to that topic. And the next time you're vulnerable and you cry, to trap that moment into a picture, a song, a sculpture, something that you'll be able to give to someone and thus open yourself forever. As my dear friend will say, friends are guardians of our weaknesses and we shouldn't be afraid of sharing it with them. And for the end, you probably expect me to leave you with some wisdom. Though I don't have any, I know what I would like for you in the future. The next time you're vulnerable and cry, do not hide your tears nor your emotions, but rather wear them proudly as a shield and totem of your humanity. Thank you very much.